I'll do. Um, so somebody sent me an article. It's pretty grim, this vlog, guys. Um, anyway, someone sent me an article. I read it, and it's it's played on my mind a little bit. So I'm going to put it out there. This is about the prison service. Um, little reminder to everyone, you know, work with lots of great people and the lads who've been in prison or I've interviewed and going to be interviewing again, came across a lot of decent people, but this is probably um, the worst case of abuse maybe I've ever heard of. The guy was called Neville husband yeah you can look him up there's plenty about him um, I'll just get into it like I say I, I was going to read the article out or parts of it but I don't really need to it's how the system works but not just the prison system it's how police work criminal justice uh, you know it's how society deals with these creatures, beasts, and monsters like Neville Husband, and that is as polite as I can make it. This guy, so, um, was a prison officer, he worked at a detention centre, 70s, 80s, I believe. Uh, Medemsley House, it was called, where he maybe started perpetrating his crimes. I don't know, it might have started before that. It was a detention center for uh, young lads, teenagers, whatever you want to call them. Um, this guy was a, a raper and torture, torturer of kids. He worked at this place for a long time um, people who come forward, lads at the time who were victims have reported daily being abused and raped, tortured, strangling people, um, probably hundreds if not thousands of sexual assaults and rapes on young men. The article talks about being successful at this and a couple of things you need in order not to get found out and you know when I say successful you know maybe that's the wrong word but um, one of the things this guy did he actually looked at the files and the family history of these young lads who were in his care the prison services care to determine who'd get visits who wouldn't who anyone cared for and who nobody cared for. And he would pe pick victims, you know, maybe already victims of abuse. So abusing victims of abuse, yeah, who's gonna believe them? They've already been abused anyway. That sounds very matter of fact, but this is what this guy did. And when you read the article, you know, it's sickening enough, but then, you know, there was sort of an investigation. There was clues. When this guy actually left this place, and he went to a couple of prisons. I think he went to Franklin, again, which is up Durham Way. Uh, Deer Bolt, which is a young offenders or was a young offenders institute. And back to Franklin, something like that. He continued his abuse. Um, when he left this Medemsley detention centre, there were clues. You know, his locker, there was disgusting material. Um, he was actually arrested for graphic images of torture on kids. He wasn't charged, he got off with it because he said it was research into homosexuality. All the clues were there. Some of the most sickening things in this article, for instance, one officer commented, we used to feel sorry for the kids because this guy worked in the kitchens. We used to feel sorry for the kids who were left behind in the kitchens at night. We used to feel sorry. Read, we knew what was happening. People knew what was happening. You don't get away with this stuff without people facilitating you. That's in life. You know, point and fact, Jimmy Savile. Jimmy Savile. 
you know, what an absolute creature. And all them people that facilitated him and probably joined in, it's disgusting. Yeah? But what we need to do, we need these things to be made public and investigated probably. Another thing that really pisses me off, boils my blood, is, you know, if it's in the public interest. Well, every single perpetrator against crime against kids, yeah, for me, is a public interest. Grooming gangs, whatever it is, I want it on front pages. It's not going to be there. You know, the press aren't going to do that, are they? they? They tone things down like judges when they're talking about these people. They don't talk about rapers, you know, people who rape and torture kids. You know, he, he abused his authority and stuff. Say it as it is. We know what these people are. Get it all front page. Every single time, public inquiry. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Get in schools, tell kids, no secrets. Anyone tells you to keep a secret, there's no such thing as secrets. We need to educate kids. It's been going on for these years. Yeah. So back to this Neville husband, this absolute creature and beast. Yeah. I believe when he went to Deerbolt, which was a young offenders institute, yeah, he's not going around with a set of keys sneaking in cells. People will have known about this guy and did nothing. I think when he was at Deerbolt, Martin Neary was the number two, as in under the dep deputy governor, let's call him, under the number one governor. Yeah, Martin Neary, look him up. Yeah, see how high we, we, he went in the prison service. He was asked about this guy, because this guy worked at Deerbolt when he was there. And do you know what he said? He said the prison service historically wasn't good at investigating cases of a sexual nature. Really? You're going to say something like that? Terrible. This guy daily raped kids. Daily. For years. Hundreds. Hundreds, yeah. People did start coming forward, yeah. There's other sickening things in this article. The article itself is well written and it has a history and it puts everything in there. When he came to retire as a prison officer, believe it or not, you know, somebody said he had had a distinguished career. You know, he was an honourable man or some shit like that. All through his career, there'll have been people working alongside him Knew what he was up to. They facilitated him. People in care homes. People in kids homes. You know, that abused. They facilitated by people that know what's going on. Do nothing about it. Yeah? All about the kids. It did eventually catch up with him. I think he became a clergyman when he left the prison service. And around 2004, 2005... I understand the next bit. I think there was four victims that they got, so he got four lots of charges against him. I understand there's hundreds of victims, and sometimes, you know, you have to take reliable victims, yeah, survivors, whatever you want to call them, and get them on them charges. And he got eight years. Yeah, eight. Eight years, eight big years. Yeah. Further charges were added... And he got an extra two years. So he got ten years. He was out just under five. These people do not get the sentences they deserve. Whole of life for a creature like that. Yeah? How much investigation were they done? Kids leaving Medamsley were approaching the police. Yeah? Going straight to the police. I've been in this detention centre. I've been abused and raped and tortured. You're on licence, kid. We'll lock you back up for accusing a prison officer of that. Really? Police facilitate these things as well in not investigating them. It's appalling. It's something nobody wants to talk about. There is some ex-coppers out there who are quite passionate. They've been on podcasts. They dedicate their lives to trying to expose people and talk about these things. But it's not going to be mainstream press, is it? Like the grooming gangs, everything's toned down to do with kids. Yeah, we don't want to talk about that. It's dirty, wash your mouth out, it's disgusting. 
Now the prison service, although there was never a public inquiry, obviously admitted some that went on because they paid out some compo, compensation. I think there was around maybe 200, 250 victims they paid compo to, yeah? I think they paid out three and a half million. Get your calculator out on your phone and work that out. What's it come to? Hold on. <laughs> I don't know. 250, three and a half million. About 15 grand, maybe. 15 grand? Really? Probably, probably 15 grand they can spend on drugs and alcohol. Because now let's look at the fallout of this. Because 70s, 80s, there'll be victims everywhere. How many of them victims are dead? Yeah, through drugs and alcohol because of the abuse. How many went on to abuse others? Yeah. How many spent the life in prison? How many went onto the streets? How much damage is there? You couldn't you could never. It's it's one of the worst cases I've ever heard of. And this guy did less than five years. And then he died of natural causes. Yeah. Again, Martin Neary. It was mentioned to him about this guy, about a public inquiry. And then again, he talks about whether it's in the public interest. They don't want things like this in the public interest. You know, the prison service, like the police, is very good at getting rid of good people. You know, the people that come forward and report wrongdoing, they'll have you out, they'll work you out. I know plenty of people that's happened to. But people facilitated this guy. Disgusting creature, Neville Husband. Go and look him up. Horrible horrible beast okay so not some of pleasantness but i'd read the article yeah he, he doesn't talk about the fallout don't talk about the victims there's probably victims still coming forward now and there's nothing you can do sadly you know me taking a step back now almost daily someone i know a friend or someone i used to lock up yeah you get a little message you know, so you start talking about things and it comes out. Yeah, Mr. S, this happened to me. I was abused or whatever. We're all very judgmental of people who go to prison, people who use drugs and the like. You know, I'm not saying nothing new here, but we're not addressing it. We're not addressing the drug issue, are we? We're building more spaces for 2026, 18,000 more. Not enough. Not enough to cover how many more people were going to be locking up but again you know prison officers now what on 22 25 grand a year 40 grand to lock up an addict who's probably got issues that have never been addressed yeah the drug issues and that shocking probably ranted or gone on a bit too long now um but yeah i've got some great people to interview some people i'm going to bring to the channel you had not seen before um, got some lasses coming on the channel got a young lass hopefully coming on the channel to talk about her struggle with mental health and social media and the like educated kids guys it's about educating kids and protecting them and making them aware what's out there <coughs> okay guys sorry for the rant hope you're all well um, like I said, loads of people to interview, a lot of interesting people. Next couple of weeks, a guy who worked at Broadmoor for five years. You know, I'm mad keen to speak to him, want to know what is he like. I'll talk myself more about forensic units and mental health units. Because as someone pointed out, Ashworth, Rampton, Broadmoor, Ice Secure Hospitals, not everyone there is super bad. You know, it's like prison. A lot of prisoners just get on with their stuff. Some people, segregation, special units. You know, hardcore next level. I'll see there.